at Gilles Villeneuve. He was at Ferrari, he was God. A Formula One world champion in waiting. Villeneuve, um, how quick was he? He was quick. Fantastic! Gilles Villeneuve. He was a driver with panache and a generosity of style which he took to the very limit. Pironi was a purebred product of the ELF scholarship system, a scheme established by the petrol company to generate an eventual French world champion for the first time. Didier took a more considered approach. His education had taught him early in life that a career should be founded on methodical organisation. Pironi was still seeking his first win for Ferrari at the start of his second season with the team, and this was a source of frustration. And it's a beautiful start by Alain Prost, the man who is leading them. It's through they go. The two Ferraris are getting up. Down, round the Retifilio. The two Ferraris right up behind the second Renault. Out through to complete one lap with 59 to go. And look at the lead that Arnoux has. in the lead. He is definitely the hardest man to pass. The Renault seems to be quicker on the straight marginally than the Ferrari, but that small little margin is uh, its effect is very big because he came from the, uh, he overtook them from a distance behind from which the Ferrari couldn't have threatened had they start, started uh, back to front in that position. 2.4 seconds separate the leader ahead, but Villeneuve is on the inside line. There are certainly no team orders because Pironi is now up into second position. Pironi, who has won one Grand Prix in his career, as compared with Gilles Villeneuve, who has won six. Well, a bit more than before, I thought, coming out of the Renault there, so we'll, we'll keep that one monitored. We'll have a look at that, but it was... It, I didn't see as big a one before, did you, Murray? No, I did not. I've noticed it for some time, but it was much more significant there, and it is much more... There he goes again. 
Watch the Renault, everybody, very carefully. Watch the, the back of the car. And Villeneuve is going to go through and take the lead. Yes, yes I think the Renault's in trouble. He seems, he seems to have slowed down. He's not producing the power. It's, 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 yeah, it's turbo. Turbo's blown up now. That's a very spectacular. Don't set the four Ferrari on fire. What a great change. What a terrific race on who's driven. But I'm afraid that is the end of that for him. So we're going to have to see how well the two Ferraris can fight each other. And, uh, oh, healthy little player, so you think he's going to exactly the ex Sorry, James, exactly the same thing happened in practice. Leads out into the long, sweeping, goes on for a long, long time, left-hander the Tamburello. Fifth gear, they build up to nearly 190 miles an hour on this section, up to the Reticilio. Yeah, Villeneuve's well placed now, he's picking up the draft, but he's going to be alongside. Which side's Peroni going to keep? Peroni, I think, has made him go the, the way he shouldn't have done. The long round, Villeneuve's inside. Absolutely side by side, but Villeneuve's got the line up the hill into the next corner. And look at the ATS right in the line of both of them, and Villeneuve takes his opportunity, comes out to the left, and it could be that Peroni's going to be balked, and they go through absolutely together, and Villeneuve leads again. Another change in the lead, and it's on lap 49, and the French Canadian has put one across Peroni, and uh, I think we have to put some of the blame there onto the ATS, because... Uh, he certainly didn't make it at all easy for either of the, two, of the two Ferrari drivers, but how brilliantly Gilles Villeneuve took his opportunity on lap 49. Still, and look at that. Peroni and Villeneuve absolutely together. They Peroni's the lead. Peroni's just, just nipped through. We, we, the, unfortunately, the director was away, but Villeneuve is going to respond here, possibly. So I would suspect that what happened, that was on the straight, I would suspect that Villeneuve made a bit of a mistake coming out of the complex before the pits, came out a bit slowly, and uh, Baroni had the chance to pick it up. So we've definitely got a fight, because I don't think Villeneuve's the sort of man to take much notice of the slow signals from the pits, and I would think that uh, he'll desperately want to fight back. He'd be mindful of championship points and all the other uh, implications. It's an 
now we go into left 50 feet. Of course, the better toe you get, but Vilna's pulled, pulled right up now. He's going to sweep down the outside. They're going to arrive together, and Pekemper only push him. Oh, the, I said he was. Vilna wasn't so far off, giving him one up the back then. But Peroni is defending that position with all he's got. There's going to be, I imagine, uh, a quite tense interview between the Ferrari management and Mr. Peroni at the end of this race when uh, he blandly said, uh, I didn't see any signal, I, I just kept going as best I could. And uh, how very, very good it is, because Pironi now, who had Villeneuve uh, right up his exhaust pipe just a few yards ago, has now got that car length ahead of Villeneuve, which can make all the difference. This lap 58 to the Rivazza again, the double left-hander when they've gone underneath the bridge, over the rough patch again, Villeneuve still right with Pironi, and he's undoubtedly going to challenge, I suspect, as they come up to the Traguado, which is where they've done it again, right at the end before, right at the end of the lap. Yes, Villeneuve's really battling away now. With, uh, two, just over two laps to go. to lap 59. Is it con Yeah, he's well placed now. He's right, right behind him and he's going to get by on the straight, but can Peroni defend his situation down to the corner? They're going to arrive together with Villeneuve at just his arms. He's going to be a little bit in front. And he's done it exactly as he did it before. He was on the outside on the right-hander, on the left on the left side on the left-hander. That gave Villeneuve the advantage which he has taken. And now he's keeping his foot stuffed right in the car for it was rather the fuel injection. And uh, now he's got to keep ahead of Pironi, not just for this lap, but the next lap as well. And my guess is that he will do just that, because Pironi has been second most of the time. Yeah, what Pironi's going to have to do is, is to be very well placed as they come onto the long straight to, in that combination uh, corners, those combination corners before the pit. He's fighting well, he's well placed now, he's just got to hold that position, not get any further behind Fielder, but he's dropped back a bit. He's got to, he's got to start within sort of four lengths of Fielder when they come onto the, uh, the main straight past the pits. If and he can do that, he'll get him on the straight. And he's certainly going to be within four lengths. This is the last part of the last lap but one. Yeah, the problem is, of course, being the car behind, he's, he's further than that behind than that now, and, of course, he doesn't get quite the same amount of grip. Can he close right up? Can he get himself in position? He's not badly placed. If he can just get the power down nicely, oh, he's all right. He's got, he's got a chance, but he didn't get the power on quite as he would have liked to. And he's not quite close enough to swing right past Villeneuve. But this, he's... this is lap 60, the last lap. We, we are around the Tamburello and see Via Pironi now. Pironi, he's going through. Pironi's got, he's got to come down the inside. He's got him. Oh, he's going wide. Oh, fantastic stuff. They've changed places on two laps running. And Pironi now, all he has to do now is keep it pointing the right way. And uh, no mistakes because there really isn't a passing place. And Nesby and I can have a go up, up here. There aren't really any more passing places on the lap. So it's just, just Pironi's done. The last of the late breakers, Pironi has shown himself to be with that masterly manoeuvre on the last lap in this San Marino Grand Prix. understand that Peroni can overtake him when they had an understanding and that was that really destroyed him in a way that it made him completely mad because he had trusted and he was a very trusting guy because he was a very honest guy. Ferrari loved the internal friction in the team. Oh, not only the team, in his whole company. He loved that. He thought that was a, a good way of motivating people. He was at Ferrari, he was, he was not supported completely by, by the team. Ferrari didn't back him 
He was absolutely furious just before Zolder. Very, very furious. pressure that he felt after Imola. I think it pushed him to take too many chances. And he took a chance going around where he probably should not have. into the back of Prost in practice at Hockenheim and suffered injuries that ended his racing career. 